and the story goes on that at 1933, with the Depression, nobody wanted, the, the government didn't, uh, didn't want to uh, have any more expenses than it could do with, and so it cut down the army. Anybody who had done his service at seven and five was put on the reserve, which meant to say, you were unemployed in London, which is where poor old Dad Milligan found himself. And uh, after a bit of a struggle, getting used to the fog and the sleet and the rain in R London after the beautiful sunshine of Burma, he got himself a nice job with the Associated Press of America and quickly became the photo sales manager. Uh, and he tells very funny stories, which uh, I won't continue because it'll be a long story. Uh, and we went to the local little schools and Brother Spike, being eight years older than me, was already into the teenage years and joined a little local band where he learned to play the trumpet. And he played in these little vocal bands all around uh, London until the war years came and he got called up into the army to serve uh, with the artillery again. He would have been the fourth generation of artillerymen in the, in the Milligan family. And he served uh, in uh, Algeria into Tunisia, where the Germans uh, surrendered, and then he moved to Italy and fought in Italy. Uh, and later on, I was going to art school, and uh, I was called up towards the end, of course, uh, beginning of 44. And after training in Ireland, of all places, would you imagine? They sent me back home, didn't they, to do my military training? Uh, and then they sent us in the infantry, which I was in, uh, the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, would you believe it? Uh, and we were sent to France, and we fought in the last big battles there. And uh, the largest one was called the Reichswald Forest Battle. And it was a big one. There was 1,400 guns firing us in. So it was a whopper. And we fought right the way through and right up into Germany to the capitulation in Hamburg. And that was the end of the war. And when the end of the war came, Brother Spike had been uh, downgraded because he got shell-shocked. And what was he doing? He was performing with a group of a couple of other people in the uh, um, uh, uh, army entertainments unit. And they were touring around Italy with the groups of people performing and this is where it all started. And so when he came back to England, of course, he was already uh, jumping around doing theatrical things and a couple of his old friends that he knew in the army days, particularly Harry Seacombe, said, oh, look, uh, Spike, you, you're pretty good at writing these funny things. Why don't you write us a, a script and I'll get my friend Peter Sellers and we'll form a threesome and maybe one other person uh, and, and we'll see if we can sell it to the uh, BBC. And of course, that was the start of the Goon Show. And so, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, I was also very lucky because, A, as an infantryman, I survived and <laughs> didn't get shot. Uh, and at the end, I said when I was demobilized in 45, I said, look, my art education was uh, uh, interrupted by being called up. And the, uh, and the government said, oh, dear, what can we do? Uh, what about a fully paid married man's um, uh, grant? to study for four years uh, the diploma course at the University of London. I said, oh, thank you very much. And so I, I got a certain benefit out of this war. Uh, and uh, so that's where I went and I did the diploma course. Uh, and I was married for the first time. I married just before I left the army.